Hey everybody, Matt Bell here, not at the electric violin shop today. I'm actually in my studio at home, but we are gonna be talking about wireless systems for uh, amplified violins. So it's a thing that we get a question about a lot, right? You know, hey, I wanna run wireless because I'd like to be able to get out and stroll through the crowd. I'd like to be able to move around. And this cable right here is, is bringing me down, man. I don't wanna be down, it's bringing me down. So uh, you know why they bring you down? Because cables suck. They're a nuisance, they're a tripping hazard. You risk somebody tripping on them and yanking them out of your whole setup and then you're dead in the water. Yeah, cables are horrible. They're actually a safety issue. Uh, they, they fall down usually behind you. And if you step on the thing, it could yank your instrument right out of your hand. Has happened to me. It's horrible. I hate it. Uh, so yeah, cables are awful. So, but the problem is in amplified music, you are gonna have some, you're gonna have to have electricity in most situations. Uh, and there's no wireless electricity. So we're gonna have to have uh, cables running power. If I've got more than one pedal on my pedal board, I'm gonna have to connect those pedals to each other. I'm not gonna use a wireless system for that. I'm actually gonna use cables. And then 99 times out of 100, 999 times out of 1,000, you're gonna hardwire your output to the board. Almost nobody runs wireless to front of house. So you are gonna have some cables, yes. And it is true that some people prefer running a cable from their instrument to their rig, it's fine. Uh, they're very reliable. Cables are super reliable. They do occasionally go bad, but they don't tend to drop out the way wirelesses can. They're inexpensive and they can give you some tone suck. Uh, and you're like, tone suck, what the heck? I say cables suck, did tone sucks? Yes. So the thing about a cable is it has capacitance and that capacitance manifests itself in a high end roll off. Guitar players hate this, which is why they always use the shortest cable that they can. Uh, violinists, actually we can use this. So what happens is with the capacitance in a long or low quality cable, you're going to get a fair amount of high end roll off, which means it's going to make your sound a little duller. Uh, again, guitar players hate it. They want all that extra brightness. Violins are screechy enough already. Sometimes a little bit of high-end roll-off is gonna make our instrument sound better. Uh, and then, the, of course, the other thing with a cable is if you're playing an instrument that must, 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 must have a preamp for capaci or for uh, uh, impedance reasons, I got capacitance and impedance, too many words. Um, if for impedance reasons, you need a preamp, and we do have videos on that if you don't follow what I'm saying here, then it's gotta be the very first thing you plug into, your preamp does. So you're gonna have to run a cable from your instrument to the preamp. And then you can run a wireless from there if you've got a preamp you can clip on your belt. But if you must, must, must have a preamp for impedance reasons, then you cannot use a wireless. So if we can use a wireless, most people can, um, then which one's best? Well, it turns out there's no such thing as best. There are some factors to consider. Uh, one is transmitter design. Let me see if I've got my instrument here. You can have a bud style wireless. That is a bud transmitter design, or there are some that use a pack. So transmitter design, which one is gonna be better for me? Um, that's up to you. A lot, a lot of string players like having a bud style wireless because most violinists don't have a strap on their instrument the way a Viper player does. And then having that pack is kind of a pain. Uh, battery type, do you want rechargeable or do you wanna be using uh, AA batteries or nine volt batteries? Think about the kind of range you want. How far are you gonna be getting from your receiver? Uh, also think about the frequency range that this thing is gonna operate in. Most of the sort of affordable wireless systems that are out there today are in the 2.4 gigahertz range, which is great. There's tons of cheap receivers and transmitters in that range. The downside is that's the same frequency range as Wi-Fi. So if you're in a very heavily Wi-Fi dense area, uh, you could be having problems with dropouts in your wireless system. And then of course price, because you know we do have to buy these things, so price matters. So there are some ultra cheap, like under $100 systems out there. You can find them on the internet. Um, I've seen them as cheap as 30 bucks. 
I wouldn't use one for a gig that I was getting paid for. But um, yeah, if you're practicing and you want a little $30 wireless system for your house, it's probably gonna work just fine. If you're busking and you're using a little battery powered speaker or something, the quality difference in a $30 wireless to a $200 wireless, it's probably not gonna be super glaring in your battery powered uh, amplifier out there. Probably good enough. Uh, I probably wouldn't take one to like a big gig that I was playing um, because you start plugging these things into a really nice PA system and you are 100% going to be able to hear that, oh, that sounds like a $30 wireless system. There isn't what we would call entry level for people that are doing this for a living or doing this for money um, is probably going to be around 200 bucks. Uh, line six has the G10 or the G10S. Boss has a competitive product called the WL20 or WL50. Honestly, I'm a Line 6 guy, but uh, the Boss product is a fantastic product. It's kind of a Ford versus Chevy debate. Some people like one, some people like the other. The truth of the matter is they both work great. They sound good. They're Bud style wirelesses, um, which means you don't have to have a, a belt pack or something that you've got to find a place to put. They do run in that 2.4 gigahertz range. Again, that's the same range as Wi-Fi, which if you're in a very RF dense environment, that could be a problem. Mid-level systems, I use the Line 6 G50. A lot of people using the Shure GLXD. Uh, they're gonna have more power, so you're gonna be able to have a little bit uh, fewer dropouts. You're gonna be able to get a little bit better range. They do use a belt pack transmitter, which if you have a Viper is not a problem. If you wear a belt, not a problem but there are people that don't always wear belts. Um, so if you like to wear dresses, if you're wearing costumes that don't necessarily have a place to put a belt pack, could be kind of a pain. You may have to get a little bit creative. What a lot of people in the theater business will do is they will use a Velcro strap just under their chest, uh, and then they could put the transmitters on that Velcro strap, maybe in the back or something, so it's out of the way of their clothing. <coughs> so reliability, is a thing with wirelesses, right? So we've got to think about how important is our signal integrity? If, if I'm playing a bar gig and a dropout once in a blue moon isn't the end of the world, that's one thing. Weddings or corporate events, what you'll generally notice is as you get further and further from your receiver, the number of dropouts is gonna to start to go up at some point. So if you can stay in what we would kind of call the safe zone, Generally, uh, with these, uh, what I'd say, entry-level or mid-level wireless systems, most of them are going to work just fine. Big shows, TV broadcasts, you're probably going to want to use one of these high-end systems I'm going to talk about next. If you're playing the Super Bowl, it doesn't matter. You know why? Because in the Super Bowl, nobody's actually playing live. It's all pre-recorded minus the lead vocal in a lot of cases. Why is that? Because they're afraid the instrumentalists aren't going to be able to pull off the job in front of a billion people? No. It's because no tech person is ever going to sign on a piece of paper saying, I can set up a stage with 100 wireless units in five minutes. And in the most RF dense environment on the planet, they are guaranteed to work. It's not a thing. It can't be done from a technical standpoint, which is why the Super Bowl halftime is pre-recorded. I'm really sorry if you didn't already know that. Um, so yeah, sorry if you thought those guys were actually playing live, they're not. And it's not because they can't do it, it's because the tech crew, there's no tech crew on the planet that would sign up for that, it just can't be done. So when we say bulletproof, it's relative, right? It doesn't, there's no wireless system that will never, ever, ever, ever drop out. But the ones that are very unlikely to drop out are these thousand dollar plus ones and they are not operating in that 2.4 gigahertz range these they're all going to have body packs most of them are going to require you to do some frequency maintenance you're going to have to know a little bit about how to change the frequencies on that unit because every town you're in is going to have different sort of clean zones and safe zones in the frequency spectrum so you're going to have to know a little bit about how to manage your frequencies I've got this one big show and I cannot have a dropout in this show, right? Cannot happen. I'm gonna need a pro level wireless, but I don't wanna spend $2,000 on a, on a wireless system for one show. If somebody's providing sound for this show, because you're probably not, just backline it. 
just tell whoever it is that, hey, when I've got my technical requirements to play this thing, I need a wireless. You've got to provide it. And it's going to have to be one that your tech is there to make sure that the frequencies are managed properly so that it doesn't cut out. So a lot of people don't think they can request a wireless system for their performance. You totally can. Most of these backline rental companies have wireless systems and their guys are trained to work them right so you don't have to worry about that wireless system dropping out on you. If it does, it's not your problem, it's their problem. If it is a big enough show that a dropout would be completely disastrous, right? We're playing on the Today Show or whatever, have a backup plan. Cables suck, but they are extremely reliable. So have one ready. I always, always, always tour with a long cable sitting right next to my rig in case I start having wireless problems. A tech can run out, they can wire the thing up in about five seconds and we're back up and running again, okay? I do have one very, very unscientific theory. I have no proof of this, but in my experience, there are a few people out there that have this thing about them. We can call it an aura or whatever, that like these 2.4 gigahertz systems, they just don't work around these people. Fortunately for me, I'm not one of these people. My G10 and my G50 has worked in nearly every place I've played around the world. I can think of a handful, like less than five places on the planet where my G5 or my G50 or my G10 did not work. And we just ran a cable, it wasn't any big deal. There are people that like these systems just do not work for them. I don't know what it is, something about your, the, the aura or the energy that's coming off your body. I don't know what it is. There's no science here. But if you're one of those people, I'm really sorry, but you're going to have to spend money. You're going to have to spend money on one of these higher end systems. If you have to use a high end system that's got a transmitter pack and you're like, ah, oh, I don't know where to put this. You've got some choices. If you have an instrument with a strap, like a Viper, you can put it on the strap. If you're a person who wears pants and has a belt, you can put it on your belt. If you're not, say you are a shoulder rest kind of person, you can usually rig up something to where you can fit it in this space here underneath your instrument. Don't mind this uh, thing underneath my instrument. It's really embarrassing. The other thing you can do, you wouldn't do it on your nice acoustic violin. On your electric though, you might want to just put a piece of Velcro on the back of the instrument. You can Velcro it to the instrument and that's going to be a, uh, a good place to put that. So all that to say, wireless systems are super mega fantastic. I love them. I use them all the time. If you're using a relatively inexpensive one, if the bud style wireless works for you most of the time, get one of those. Just be aware that there are going to be some situations in which it isn't going to work. You could be uh, playing Radio City Music Hall and there's just so much RF going on. It's not going to work. You're going to have to have a backup plan. So uh, yeah, don't think that you're going to necessarily go play a super, super RF intense environment and that your $200 wireless is, is going to be guaranteed to work because it's not. So um, I have one. I love it. But uh, if I go play Carnegie Hall, I'm going to ask them to provide me a better wireless than that. So um, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. If you've got questions, you can put them in the comments section and we'll do our best to answer.